Well, hello everybody. Good morning. It's Monday and let's talk about feelings. Let's talk about being sensitive. Let's talk about your sensitivity. Let's talk about your lack of sensitivity. And, um, you know, when I was young, I would be like, my family would say things to me like, you cry at the drop of a hat. And I'd be like, no, I don't. They'd say, yes, you do. I'd say, no, I don't. They'd say, yes, you do. And I'd be like, no, I don't. So I cried at the drop of a hat a lot because I was sensitive and because I'm still sensitive. Now, the funny thing about that is that I would guess that if you polled most of my friends and people close to me, they would probably say that they don't see me as sensitive. And, and I'll tell you why. And I want to talk a little bit about sensitivity as far as a way of being or moving through the world. You know, I have feelings. You do too. All my feelings matter. All my feelings don't matter to you in the same way that all your feelings don't matter to me. And that's not being insensitive, that's being realistic. I got enough baggage and enough stuff to consume my sorry ass all day with how I'm feeling and what's happening and all these little things that everybody is doing that's making me feel sensitive. So this idea that the world is supposed to be some kind of vessel to be able to hold and answer to my feelings is absurd. Absurd. Absolutely absurd. So I have a select few people that I talk to when I'm upset or feeling sensitive. And, and mind you, you know, my sensitivity is not always rational. I can become more sensitive to a fly that keeps buzzing around my food than some guy cheating on me or something much more monumental. Because my feelings, again, don't always make sense. But, you know, they're just brought up by the things that are happening to me. So what is the point? What is the point about my feelings? What is the point about being sensitive or not? So I would almost switch out the word because sensitive is like one of those words that kind of, I would say has gotten me into trouble. You know, like when I've had, and I'm going to generalize, men say things like, well, you know, I can really tell how people are feeling. And, and I go, oh, so you're sensitive. And they're like, no, I'm not sensitive. So I'm like, okay, so maybe you're not sensitive. Maybe you are. Maybe I'm more sensitive than I think I am. And I am because there's a part of me that feels everything. I am an open, walking, talking, moving target for everything happening around me. The noise of traffic, my own music, the things going on in my head, what you say, what you say to me, what you don't say to me, how you're acting, how you're not acting, whether or not I think it's okay how you're acting or not acting, right? And this is just the self-centered and overly sensitive nature of being human. You know, my ego is just constantly caught up with self, self-thinking, self-pride, self-consciousness, and all kinds of other things that I dress up as being nice and helpful for you. They're still cloaked in absurd amounts of self and fear of self and fear of you. And then I become overly sensitive because I'm not really being honest with myself or with you. Now, being honest with myself or with you doesn't mean I blurt out everything I feel and doesn't mean that you need to know everything that I'm sensitive about. But I do take care of my feelings. So if something comes up that is particularly sensitive, I have a mouth and I can use it. As opposed to like, I'll see these people, like almost, I mean, sometimes on social media and they be like, oh, I feel awful today about blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, that kind of stuff happens to me every day. And I feel like I have to learn how to let go of a lot of that stuff. I mean, surrendering is a beautiful thing. And in my coaching, I talk a lot about this isn't just about building self-awareness. Like, I am doing these Facebook Lives to help you build self-awareness, to again, reinforce my own ability to grow my own self-awareness because I feel like being by being self-aware, I'm more conscious and I can decide, you know, what's sensitive to me, what I need to let go of. But in addition to that, the second thing I teach in my coaching about how to be more powerful is you have to have a higher source, a higher self that you're answering to or being accountable to for your feelings, for your life, for what's happening, because otherwise you're going to be constantly just thrown about by all kinds of stuff happening that's just not to your liking or that you don't appreciate or that people are doing. And then you get steeped in that just self-centered fear and self-absorption. And you actually think that people, the stuff that people are doing in the world, they're doing to you. 
So let's say, you know, you're selling stuff and people don't buy stuff. So you're like, nobody ever wants to buy anything from me. Or, you know, you're dating, you're out there and you're putting yourself online and getting rejected. And, you know, I'm a hot fox. I get rejected all the time. I've been rejected probably more than most people I know. But I'm probably because I'm always out there. I'm always going at it. I'm always trying to date and meet new people. But, you know, the thing is, is that I can't make the world and what it's doing about me. I have to bring it back to self. And if I want to be sensitive, I do want to be sensitive because I'm vulnerable as I'm moving through the world. And I want to feel and experience what's happening with other people in a healthy, holistic, and higher self-centered kind of way, not Nicole self-centered kind of way. That's about all we got for today on sensitivity. Come back tomorrow and maybe we'll talk again about anger. Woo! (laughs) Have a good day, you guys.